Ibrahim Gangat. The time now, 24 minutes after 8 Central African time. Class inequality continues to reflect racial divisions according to IJR's 2013 South African Reconciliation Barometer Survey. Uh, Mr. Jan Hofmeyer, Program Head of the Policy and Analysis Unit, the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation, explains and elaborates further. Let's welcome him to the program. Good morning and welcome, Mr. Hofmeyer. Good morning, Prime. Thank you so much for being with us. Mr. Hofmeyer, this particular exercise, the South African Reconciliation Barometer, uh, when did it all start and what is it in aid of? Well, we, we, we did the first survey in uh, 2002, so the first pilot survey, and since then we've been conducting it every year um, on an annual basis. It is, it's a national public survey that is representative of um, South Africa's population demography, in other words, in terms of race, um, in terms of gender, uh, also sort of geographic location in terms of whether people come from a rural or an urban area. So so the sample is a, a representative sample of, of South Africans. And what we try to measure is how South Africans generally respond to social, political and economic changes in society and how that impacts again on national reconciliation in South Africa and also the broader process of social cohesion. Yes. Now, when we look 10 years down the line from 2002, 2003 up to 2013 now, 20 years into democracy, approaching the fifth national elections, what are some of the findings? What are we looking at? And what are the fun- some of the findings that we need to take cognizance of in this country, Mr. Hofmeyer? I think for, for us, it's probably so the, the one that you mentioned at the introduction of the, of the discussion, the growing prominence of class as an explanatory variable in, in terms of how South Africans respond uh, to, to social political change and, and to each other. Um, what, what we've seen over the years is that we have, in successive surveys, asked South Africans what they regard as the primary source of social division in, in South Africa. And over the years, we've seen increasing percentages responding that the the difference between those that are rich and poor uh, offers the, 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 the biggest source of, of social divide in South Africa. Now, I think bef- before I go any further, it is important to say that we are not saying that the issue of class has replaced the issue of race in South Africa. This is by no means the case. What we do see is that there is a large overlap between um, between class and race um, when one looks at, at, at economic development and also the division of income in, in South Africa. But what we do find significant is that if we find, or if we ask South Africans to identify one specific source, um, the issue of class comes up on top above all the other explanatory variables which include things like race, like religion, like language, and, and also uh, discrimination on the basis of HIV AIDS status. Yes, and having said that, Mr. Hofmeyer, is one of the primary issues at this point in time that this is not allowing for effective reconciliation, some of the things that you have just mentioned now? Most definitely. I, I think where, where we do see social interaction in South Africa between people of different historically defined racial groups. That's primarily what one would term sort of the the formal economy. In other words, those are people that are employed primarily in the middle class um, and and therefore sort of people that that, that interact or have the opportunity to interact um, in sort of integrated spheres. And and one, one sees that sort of primarily um, in our in our middle classes, and what what distinguishes our middle class from from impoverished South Africans is the fact that that they are mobile, and you know although South Africans still primarily live in racially homogenous neighbourhoods, 
if if they are economically active, if they are employed, they they do travel between where they live and and these sort of more integrated workspaces, and therefore they have the opportunity to act uh, or to interact across um, the historically defined racial barriers. Mm-hmm. Finally, Mr. Hoffmeyer, when we look at the samples, now obviously talking on this topic, we have to look at urban areas, we have to look at rural areas, we look at the type of people. What, no. what was that sample that you basically took in, in order to reach the, the, some of the findings that you have at this point in time? Yes, the, the, the total national sample is 3,500, which is the standard sa- sample for any survey of this kind. So you would find when people will start doing polling for the elections or things like that. This is sort of a standard size sample. It's about 3,500 people. Mm-hmm. And that was from both the rural and the urban area as well? That's, that's correct, yes. Mm. Yes, so a lot of hard work for us to do still in South Africa at this point in time. The findings of the IJR Institute for Justice and Reconciliation that has just been released and obviously give us some indication that there's still, you know, uh, quite a bit of uh, differences in terms of reconciliation that we need to attend to. I thank you for your time, Mr. Uh, uh, Hoffmeyer. We speak to you sometime in future. Uh, have a wonderful day and goodbye to you, sir. Thank you very much for inviting me, Brian. That's right. Thank you. That's Mr. Jan Hoffmeyer, our special guest this morning, program head of the Policy and Analysis Unit, the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation, Poverty, Poverty 